Okay, so I'm going to hurry and go through some of the questions um, on the review. Um, I'll kind of stop and start the video as I go just so I can erase the stuff that's here on the board um, and then just write the new stuff. So if I go a little bit too fast, just feel free to pause, you know, back up a little bit in the video, whatever you need to do. So in the first question, we have a right triangle where we have this side's 25, this side is our unknown, and then our hypotenuse is 30. We are solving for the unknown side. So anytime you have two out of three sides, you're solving for the third side, you have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Now for the sides that are labeled A and B, generally speaking, it doesn't matter which one you call which. So I'm just going to call this one A, this one B. The one that's opposite the 90 degree angle, that one has to be C. So the Pythagorean theorem that we have is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if we plug in the values that we have, A is 25, so we have 25 squared plus B squared equals C, which is 30 squared. Now from here, most of the rest is just going to be calculator work. So if we take 25 and square that, that's going to give us 625 plus B squared, and then 30 squared, if we plug that in, that's going to give us 900. So then from here, we're going to subtract over the 625. So we get B squared equals 900 minus 625, which that gives us 275. And then our final step, we take the square root of both sides. So if we plug in the square root of 275 into the calculator, that is going to give us approximately 16.7. So that's going to be our answer for the first one. Example number two in the review, this one is very similar. We have two sides, we're solving for the third side, but this time our unknown is the hypotenuse. So these two sides we're going to call A and B, and then our hypotenuse will be C. So this time we will have A squared, so nine squared, plus five squared equals C squared. So nine squared gives us 81, five squared gives us 25, so if we add those two together, we get 106 equals c squared. And then just like in the previous one, to get our unknown by itself, we take the square root of both sides. So if we plug in the square root of 106, that should give us approximately 10.3. So this is how we solve for the missing side when we have two out of three sides. We had one example where we solve for the hypotenuse, one example where we solve for each of the two legs. Okay, so example number three, I'm going to skip just because that one is essentially the same as what we did in example number one. You followed the same procedure. So we're gonna move on to four and five. So in example four, we have a triangle where the angles are labeled A, B, and C, and we have our three side lengths. We are asked to solve for sine of A and cosine of A. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna find the, the angle that you're referencing, which in this case for both of them is A. So that's this angle right here. So from that angle, we are going to figure out which side is the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. So the one that's directly across from it, so the side length that's labeled 8, that one will be A. The one that's across from B will be uh, side B. And the one opposite uh, angle C will be side C. So the one that's directly across, so in this case side length A, that is going to be the opposite side. The one that is across from the 90 degree angle, that one will always be the hypotenuse, which that leaves the remaining side as the adjacent. So now from here, we just go through our trig ratios. So sine in SOHCAHTOA, that's the first part, S-O-H in SOHCAHTOA, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is eight, hypotenuse is 10. Eight over 10, we can reduce this to four over five. Cosine, that's the middle portion of SOHCAHTOA, C-A-H. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is 6, hypotenuse is 10. 6 over 10 reduces to 3 fifths. So that's what our answer would be for number 4. 5 is essentially the same setup. We're just using a different angle, um, and we're using different trig functions. So we're still looking at angle A, but now angle A is down here at the bottom. So the one that is directly across from it will be the opposite side, so that'll be the 15. The one across from the 90 degree angle, that's the hypotenuse. 
and then the one that's right next to it, that's the adjacent. So tangent, that's that last part, TOA in SOHCAHTOA. So T-O-A, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is going to be 15. The adjacent is going to be 36. So now from here we simplify. So both of these are going to be divisible by 3. So 15 divided by 3 gives us 5. 36 divided by 3 gives us 12. So 5 over 12. Now, uh, cotangent, this is just the reciprocal of tangent. So because we know the value of tangent, we just flip it upside down, and that gives us cotangent. So instead of 5 over 12, it would be 12 over 5. But if you forgot that, if we know um, that it's the opposite of tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so therefore cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. So we would do 36 divided by 15. Both of those are divisible by 3. That would also reduce to give us the 12 over 5. Okay, so the next two that we're going to look at are 6 and 7. So in 6, they tell us that sine of theta, so remember Greek letter, that just means it's a variable, so it's just like x. So the sine of theta is equal to 4 over 11. We want to find secant. So secant is the opposite of cosine. So if we had cosine of theta instead of sine of theta, we would just flip it upside down. In the case of something like this where we can't just flip it upside down, we're just going to start by drawing a triangle. So I'll put my right angle here. Now theta you can label as either one of the two remaining angles. I usually put it down here on the bottom, but it does not matter where you draw it in. So sine of theta is equal to 4 over 11. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite will be 4, the hypotenuse will be 11. So secant, once again, is the opposite of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so this would be hypotenuse over adjacent. Now we know that the hypotenuse is going to be 11, so we know this will be 11 over something, but we don't know what the adjacent side is. Since we have two out of the three sides, though, just like in the first two examples, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the missing side. So I'm just going to call this side x. So we will have x squared plus 4 squared equals 11 squared. So x squared plus 16 equals 121. Subtract over the 16, we get x squared is equal to 105, and then we take the square root. Now the square root of 105 does not simplify, so we're just going to leave x as the square root of 105. So that is what the denominator is going to be. But remember, like what we talked about in the notes, we cannot leave a square root in the denominator. So we have to rationalize it. So we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by whatever the denominator is. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 105. So on the top, 11 times the square root of 105 is just 11 root 105. And then in the bottom, root 105 times root 105 just gives us 105. And so that is what our simplified answer will be here. For number seven, they give us um, a picture of a triangle, and they have angles and side lengths A, B, and C already drawn in there. Now they tell us that side length C is 19, and they tell us that angle B is 68 degrees. And we want to solve for all missing parts, so all missing sides, all missing angles. The order that you do this is up to you. Generally, whatever I have more of, that's what I'm going to solve for first. I have two angles, one side length, so I'm going to solve for the third angle first. But you could solve for the side lengths first, it doesn't matter. So we have two out of the three angles. We know all the angles have to add up to 180. So angle A plus 68 plus the 90 that we have equals 180. So we add these two together. So 90 plus 68, that gives us 158, is equal to 180. Subtract over the 158, and that gives us 22 degrees. So we now have all three angles. Now we need to solve for the missing side lengths. So to solve for the first side length, we're going to have to use a trig ratio here. Now since we have all the angles, it does not matter which angle you use as your reference point. I usually start with whichever angle they gave me in the problem. So they gave me angle B, so I'm going to use angle B as my reference point. 
If you use angle A as your reference point, you'll still get the same answer in the end. So from angle B, side length B will be the opposite, side length A will be the adjacent, and then the side length C, the 19, that will be the hypotenuse. So we have the hypotenuse, we need to solve for the opposite and the adjacent. So since we have the hypotenuse, we have to use one of the trig ratios that uses hypotenuse. Sine uses opposite hypotenuse, cosine uses adjacent hypotenuse, so we can use either one of those two. I'm going to show how we set it up for both, so we can just solve for both side lengths at the same time. So first we're going to do sine to solve for the opposite side, which will be side length B. So the sine of angle B, which is 68, equals the opposite, which is B, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 19. Now, to get rid of the fraction, we multiply both sides by the denominator. So multiply both sides by 19. So we have 19 times the sine of 68. We plug that into the calculator, and we get that side length B is 17.6. Now, because we have two out of the three side lengths to solve for the third side, at this point, you could use the Pythagorean theorem like we used in the first couple of examples. I'm going to show you, um, sticking with the trig ratios, how we can use the trig ratios. So since we used sine to solve for the opposite side, the other one that we need is the adjacent side, so we can use cosine. So we'll set this up the same way. Cosine of 68 equals the adjacent, which is A, over the hypotenuse, which is 19. Multiply the 19 to the other side. So A is equal to 19 times the cosine of 68. So we get that side length A is equal to approximately 7.1. So we now have side A, side B, and angle A. So now we have every value that we have from the triangle. We have the three angles and the three side lengths. So that tells us we're done. Generally speaking, the ones that ask you to solve the entire triangle, they will usually give you three values. So you will need three values for your answer. Okay, so I'm going to skip example number eight because this one you solve the exact same way that you did number seven. The only difference is they don't have the triangle drawn for you, but you can just use the same triangle diagram that they used in example number seven. So for number nine, we have A, so side length A is equal to 3.2, side length B is equal to 1.1. So we're going to start by drawing a picture of the triangle. Now you can draw the triangle however you would like. So I could draw it like this. And just like before, it does not matter how you draw it and label it, we just have to make sure that side A is opposite angle A, side B is opposite angle B, side C is opposite angle C. So here's the right triangle, or the right angle, so I'm going to call this angle C, side C, and then I'll just pick the bottom to be A, the top to be B. Once again, if you flip them, you'll still get the same answer in the end, your triangle will just be flipped on its side. So this will be side A, this will be side B. So we have side A is 3.2, side B is 1.1. So now I have two side lengths and I have one angle. So like I said in the previous one, whichever I have more of, that's what I'm going to start by solving for first. So since I have more side lengths, I'm going to solve for the third side length. So since we have two out of the three sides, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the other side. So we'll do A squared, so 3.2 squared plus b squared, 1.1 squared, equals c squared. Now we just finished solving this like before. Add these two together in the calculator, take the square root, we get that side length c is approximately 3.4. So I'm going to draw that on the triangle. Now that we have all of the values, now we need to solve for the missing angles. So since we're solving for a missing angle, this is where we use the inverse trig functions rather than the regular trig functions. But the nice thing is we only need to use it once because we know all the angles add up to 180, so we can use that to solve for the third angle. So just to pick alphabetical order, I'm going to use angle A as my reference angle. Once again, it doesn't matter. You're going to plug all this in the calculator, and if you use a different reference angle, you still will get the exact same answer. So from angle A, the 3.2 will be the opposite side, the 1.1 will be the adjacent side, and then the 3.4 is the hypotenuse. So these two numbers were originally given to me in the problem, therefore those are the numbers I'm going to use. You can use the 3.4, but remember that that value is an approximation, so that might make your answer off by just a little teeny bit. 
So we have the opposite and the adjacent. So in using our SOHCAHTOA, opposite and adjacent that uses tangent. So we will set this up as the tangent of our angle. So the tangent of angle A is equal to the opposite, which is 3.2, divided by the adjacent, which is 1.1. So now this is where we use the inverse trig function. So we're going to take the inverse tangent of both sides. Now in the calculator, you're going to do inverse tangent, so second and then tangent, and then in that fraction, you're going to do 3.2 divided by 1.1. If you plug that into your calculator, you should get that that angle is approximately 71 degrees. So now we have two of the missing angles. We could use another inverse trig function to solve for the last angle, but it's going to be easier to just set them equal to 180. So we have angle A, which is 71, angle B, which we do not know, angle C, which is 90, all adds up to 180. So we add these two together, we get 161 plus B is equal to 180. Subtract over the 161, we get B is equal to 19 degrees. So we now have angle B, angle A, and side length C. So we have all three of our missing values solved for. Okay, so the last group that we have are the story problems. These ones you're always going to want to start by drawing a picture after you're done reading it. So for number 10, from a distance that's 50 feet away from the base of a building, the angle of elevation is 60 degrees. Estimate the height of the building. So we're going to start by drawing our triangle. So our right angle will be here. Now, the distance is 50 feet from the base of the building. So we're going to say that the vertical side is going to be the building, since it wouldn't make sense for the building to be leaning over or um, downwards, because then that would just be a horizontal building. So this side here is going to be the height of the building, and ultimately that's what we're solving for. So from a distance 50 feet away from the base of the building, the base means the bottom. So 50 feet from the bottom, so that means it's going to be this distance here. This will be 50. They tell us that the angle of elevation, so that always means the angle from the very bottom all the way up to the top. So the angle from the ground is 60 degrees. Now we want to solve for the height. Now the nice thing for these ones is generally you're just solving for one value. You're not solving for the entire triangle. So from that 60 degrees, this side over here is the opposite side. This one here is the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent, that is going to be tangent. So the tangent of 60 degrees equals the opposite, which is the height. So I'll just call that H for height, divided by 50, because that's the adjacent. Now we multiply both sides by 50. So we have 50 times the tangent of 60 is equal to h. Now this, you plug it into your calculator just like how you see it, and you will get that h is approximately 87 feet. So the building is approximately 87 feet tall. Okay? For number 11, they tell us that we have a kite is at an altitude of 14 meters above the ground. The angle of elevation is 32 degrees. What is the length of the kite string? So once again, start by drawing your picture, and then label the values. Angle of elevation, so once again, the angle from the bottom is 32 degrees. Now they tell us that the kite is at an altitude of 14 meters. Altitude is always vertical height, so that vertical distance that we have is 14. Now, find the length of the kite string. Well, the person holding the kite is going to be here. The kite is going to be blowing up and towards the right. So if the kite's here and the person's here, the length of the kite string will be the hypotenuse. So that is going to be the side we're solving for, so I'll just call that x. So from the 32 degrees, 14 is the opposite, x is the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, this is sine. So the sine of 32 degrees equals the opposite, which is 14, divided by the hypotenuse, which is x. So to get rid of the fraction, we multiply both sides by the denominator since the variable is in the fraction. So we're going to multiply both sides by x. So we have x times the sine of 32 equals 14. 
Now to get x by itself, we divide over the sine of 32. So in your calculator, you'll type in 14 divided by the sine of 32, and that is going to give you approximately 26. Since this was in meters, our answer will be meters as well. Okay? Okay, so example number 12. From a distance that's 1,213 feet from a spotlight, the angle of elevation to a cloud base is 42 degrees. Find the height of the base. So, start by drawing our triangle once again. So the spotlight is going to be here, since that is a light that basically shines upwards. Okay, so spotlight here, it's shining upwards, so the base is going to be right here. They tell us that the angle of elevation is 42 degrees, and they tell us that, let's see, a distance that is uh, 12, 13 feet from the spotlight is where the cloud base is. So from the spotlight to the base of the cloud, clouds up here, um, that distance is gonna be the 12, 13. So that'll be the bottom side. We want to find the height, so that's going to be this side here. So from our angle, we know this is the opposite side, this is the adjacent side. So opposite and adjacent, that's gonna give us tangent. So tangent of 42 equals opposite, which is h, over adjacent, which is 12, 13. And we multiply by 12, 13. So 12, 13 times the tangent of 42, we go to the calculator, and so we get that the height is approximately 1092. And so that's what our answer is going to be there. For the last one, number 13, we have a chairlift at a ski resort has a vertical rise of 2,800 feet. If the length of the ride is um, 8,976 feet, what is the angle of elevation? So since we're solving for an angle, we know we're gonna to have to use an inverse trig function. So we have our triangle. And so the chair lifts, so we start at the bottom and then it lifts us all the way up to the top. So this is going to be that cable lift that we have. The vertical rise, so up and down, is 2,800 feet. The length of the ride is going to be 8,976. So we want the angle of elevation, which is the angle from the bottom. So I'll call this theta. So from theta, this side that we have over here is going to be the opposite side. This one here is going to be the hypotenuse. So opposite and hypotenuse, that's going to be sine. So we'll have the sine of theta equals 2800 over 8976. So to get theta by itself, since we need to get rid of sine, we take the sine inverse of both sides. So we get theta equals the sine inverse of 2800 over 8976. <coughs> so then we go back to the calculator. So second sine to get to sine inverse. And then inside you'll type in 2800 over 8976. And that's going to give us approximately 18.2 degrees. So that is what our answer is going to be for this last one. So I hope that each of these made sense. If you need any extra examples or if any of these just did not make sense and you need a little bit of extra help, please feel free to reach out. You can either email me or contact me through Canvas.